that when Ursula was getting mad, I said to myself, okay, I need giant octopus woman. <laughs> Huge, cracking size octopus woman. Or else I'm done with these Disney remakes. Hello, I am High Hill Knight. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to the first ever review podcast. Trying something new. And with me, joining me for this review are my parents. Please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Star Lantern, a Knight's mama. And hello, I'm Professor Policy, Knight's father. And we are here to talk about the brand new Disney, The Little Mermaid 2023, or as I have come to call it, the $250 million mermaid. Because that's pretty much what Disney is doing. We can remake it. We have the technology. We can make it stronger, faster, better, more culturally inclusive, less problematic lyrics, more action, more CGI. <laughs> and this will be a fairly informal chat about it, even though the title says rant. We can rant about things we like, we can rant about things we don't like. Just that YouTube prefers the term rant as opposed to loose, informal discussion. <laughs> so we're not going to bother with the plot synopsis. You probably know what the movie is all about, unless you're like under five years old or living in another country. If there will be spoilers, spoilers abound though just in case. So let's get into what we liked about the movie. Just plain enjoyed about the film, uh, Star Lantern. Uh, what are two things you liked about the movie? Uh, well, one thing I liked about the movie, I really liked the way they did the just underwater scenes with the fish. Um, you know, it was like like a fantasy place almost. Um, seeing all the different kinds of fish living together peacefully and traveling in groups, pods, and whatever. I I really liked the, um, the way they depicted the uh, underwater sea life. I also liked the way they depicted the ocean. It gave me a new respect for the power of of the ocean or the water and how beautiful it can be and how dangerous it can be at the same time. They did, I don't know how they were able to re uh, research and make those um, waves and things come around, um, but it, it, was a, it was beautiful. I, I really appreciate and have a better, um, a very, very better appreciation for the ocean and the sea. Okay. And Professor Policy? I like the um, singing, the music, volume, the volume, and the um, intensity was um, very nice. I went in the audience, they had a full audience, and, and each time Ario did her solos, um, it was clapping in the audience, so I really enjoyed that part of the movie. Was there any a second op item? Or anything? No, I can't think of anything else right now. Well, that's fine. And I w uh, should point out that collectively we've all seen the movie twice. Uh, we f went to it on opening weekend and it was packed. And we had a nice time. But for me, there was these two little girls that just kept chatting in the background. And they weren't loud, but you know we were right behind you. Even when we whispered, might as well be yelling. So seeing it the second time, uh, so we went with Professor Pi, we saw it the second time in 3D, and then he went again with Star Lantern. So Professor Pi, we've seen it three times, and the other, we've seen it twice. And definitely seeing it twice was helpful because those little girls were distracting. I missed a, a couple of key sentences, a couple of key words. <laughs> sure, you can answer. Uh, I'm also glad that I saw it the second time because the... The first time was just the fascination of seeing a movie, and you don't you, you just see the wonders and the beauty and all this that and the other movie. But the second time I, I, I saw the movie, I was able to just see the movies, understand the parts, the plot, the plot, uh, the, plot uh, the characters, and I got a better understanding of the movie and the ins and outs and the beauty and et cetera of the movie. I I really enjoy the second time around much better than the first time. And Professor, you mentioned that you liked the singing, but you also didn't notice or, or remember uh, Eric's song the first time you, you Right, tried. so I'm glad I went the second time and uh, like, now I remember him singing and I, I enjoyed that part of it. 
Yeah, I like this. I like the way he sang too. He sang very good. Mm -hmm. right. Well, my two things that I liked about the movie, the song "Kiss the Girl." I was concerned how much they were going to change it because it was so quote unquote uh, problematic or misguiding or not up to modern standard. But they only just uh, changed once a particular lyric, and I think they changed a bit of a secondary lyric, but it's highly unnoticeable. But the one lyric they changed was fine, although I find it funny because they say, like, the, the new line is, use your words, go ahead and ask her. But in the scene, he doesn't. He still doesn't actually ask her for use the words. He's still trying to make it a natural moment. So the line is like, "Okay, we changed this line <laughs> for all these people who don't know how to listen to stuff in context." Uh, but the character still doesn't wind up actually using his words. So I was like, uh, "Whatever." But I did it like that. The the change was minimal. There was even a minor uh, change with the Ursula song, poor unfortunate song that I didn't even notice at all until I was doing research for this following up. And I am with Prince Eric. I like that in this movie he is much more flesh, a full flesh character. He is in wants to explore, and he also feels uh, burdened by the needs of his adoptive mother. He wants to explore. He wants to collect things. He wants to learn. So it was nice that he and Prince Ariel will have more to fall in love with each other than just being very attractive and wanting to have a fantastic singing voice. So those are two things I definitely like. You have some of that? Yes. Uh, adding to that, um, seeing the movie the second time, I, was, I came to the realization that Eric and Ariel basically had the same problem. Their parents. Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, Eric's mother was schooling him to be, you know, the next leader of the uh, of the island, the new king, prince, you know, and all that, and very demanding that he does that. Ariel's father was determined that she stayed there and stayed with the, uh, the family with under the sea and not go see humans. And both Ariel and uh, Eric wanted to see more of the world than what they were confined to. So both both people, both younger. Young is if you don't mind, <laughs> had the same problem. Their parents wanted to keep them close, and they wanted to expand their wings. So I think they had the same problem. One on land, it. one on land. One one had the problem on land. Eric, the one had the problem in the sea area. I think you mean expand their fins. Hmm. Expand their. You said expand their wings. You mean expand their fins, don't you? Fins and <laughs> no, you know they're flying. Yeah, in a way, I guess so, but just expand themselves. They wanted to see more of the world than what they were I was confined trying to, to. I was trying to make a joke. Oh, you know me and jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get a professor? Yeah, I got <laughs> it. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. I got it half the room there. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, well, let's move on to things we did not like about this. And I'd imagine this was going to be a brief section for you, Professor, since uh, you tend to be very easy going when it comes to movies. So was there anything you were disliked or disappointed or were frustrated by with this film? Nothing. Like you said, I enjoyed every part of it. I just wanted more. So I look at it like a musical, and I like musicals. So I wanted a solo by Flounder. He didn't have a solo. And The King, I wanted him to have a solo. Um, and another solo by Eric. So basically that's it, you know, I wanted more singing, more than this aerial, you know. Well, actually, uh, there was a plan to potentially give King Triton a song, but they decided to uh, scrap it. But that, that was uh, something potential. I don't know if Flounder w was uh, going to get a song, but uh, yeah, definitely there was a potential uh, for King Triton to sing a song. It was about uh, his frustrations with Ariel. So, yeah, that's a good observation or point to uh, start. <laughs> One thing that I was kind of disappointed in, um, and I was really able to pick it up in the second one, because it, you know, the first time I, I seen it, I said, did? And then when I saw it again, no, didn't. I, I was disappointed that um, at the end, when um, King, 
tried it, right? Yes. King Trident uh, did his trident to uh, give her her, her um, feet that are to become human. In in the car, in the cartoon version, she looked and was amazed and looked at her father and you know was happy that he had done that to her. Mm -hmm. In the movie version, he didn't. He, she didn't do that. And I kind of miss that happy expression that, oh, really, Dad, I can't, oh, Dad, you know, yeah. that I, 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 I didn't, I, I miss that. Uh, but the first time I had seen it, I had missed him, him putting um, his uh, trident in the war yeah. to uh, go to her to make her into human. Yeah. And, but the, but the, um, this time I really watched that scene. And then when he did do it, and then next thing you know, she's on the beat. Mm -hmm. But in the movie version, and the cartoon yeah. version, yeah. Ariel, Ariel uh, felt the, the change and looked up at and, and, and was happy and looked at her father. Mm -hmm. I wish they had had that in the real life version. Mm -hmm. No thing I didn't like um, particularly at the end. Again, is at the end. King Trident rose up, rose up, and um, he said, uh, "Eric." And, and Eric should have said, "Your Majesty," but all that he did was not. Mm -hmm. Which was in itself a form of recognition, but in this movie there was a lot of your highness, your majesty, the queen, this, you know, everybody, okay, except Ariel. But everybody, you tied it, but just the fact that he had on a crown, and you, she, you could put two, two together that, you know, he, he's a king. Mm -hmm. I think Eric should have said, your majesty, because Eric, uh, the, uh, uh, he acknowledged Eric. But Eric only not acknowledge him with a nod. He should have acknowledged him as Your Majesty. Well, going back to the animated version, during that closing sequence of the wedding and anime series, there's, there's very little dialogue. It's mostly the music, just seeing the joy in everyone. And so, I I see your point, but I imagine they were going for a much more subtle moment, especially trying try to emphasize that it's a moment between Ariel and King Triton. True, so, but still, well, I agree with yeah. what you're saying, yeah. but it still was a form of recognition. It should have been a form of, you still could have had, you still had, could have had that moment, which it was, mm -hmm. but all he had to say, your honest, and not just the nod. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's my, that's yeah. my, uh, yeah, and it's kind of unclear how long they've known each other at that point also because mm -hmm. we, we, we don't really see them interact. It seems like it's only three days. Well, no, no, no. I mean, um, as far as Prince Eric and uh, King Triton. Because in the animated film, you know, they all, both the mer people and the humans are all together for the wedding, whereas in the movie, it's like they've already gotten married and there's a bon voyage. And then there's at that moment where, like, the mer people have revealed themselves to the to the Humans, but the humans don't really seem surprised. So it's like how much time between? Oh, you have legs in the kiss to time for boy voyage. You know, mm -hmm. if, if, if they've how how much have it, have Eric and uh, King right. interacted? But, but you will make a good point. But along that line, that's a good question, which still would, would say that when when the uh, when the king said Eric, he should have said your your mm -hmm. highness. Yeah, or majesty or something like that. So, so you, want, you want us to have a verbal uh, reply as put it just now? No, verbal acknowledgement. I'm thing. acknowledging you by calling you your name. Yeah. He should have acknowledged him by saying, Your Majesty. Mm -hmm. In a low voice, Your Majesty. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and, and nodded his head. Your or, just well, well, said, well, or just said, Your well, Majesty. Well, well, in that track, right, then, then Trader should have said uh, something like Prince or something to Eric then. If you're going to be formal, if this is a formal interaction, it, this is not. It's not formal. It's just recognize. Well, no, recognize. The king called him Eric, and Eric is a prince. Mm -hmm. So if you're saying that Eric should have replied formally, then the tribe probably should agree. No, 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 no. I'm looking at it. Just saying that, like, just acknowledging that he's 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 the king. Yeah. And not Eric, not but, just. Not and just. Eric is a prince. Okay. So if one is to re, is is to Greek formally, then the other should greet formally. You consider that a formal greeting by if saying if you want them to be acknowledged as your so, Majesty instead of just a nod. So, yeah. so how would it be if uh, he had come up to to his um, mother? Would, would he have said, "Your Majesty"? 
I don't I don't know what the formal agreement. I'm, I'm quite sure there's folks in England who probably know all types of formal agreement. But I'm saying like they're both royal figures. So if you want one to address the one, uh, introduce knowledge to one formally, then the other should address one formally. He should have he should have he should have acknowledged him as the leader. Yeah. Or as should acknowledge him as I, the king. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with that. But I'm saying if you want one, then you have to have the other. Yes or no. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> so, so here's the things I did. <laughs> okay, so uh, the climax, and I will have more to say about this climax later on, but uh, the climax was visually difficult to see for me. And my vision isn't as great as it used to be, but still, it was just darkness, and Ursula is you know, mostly black, and then the sea is dark blue, and the sky is black, and it's like, what is happening on screen? Like, for the most part, you don't have to see the first movie to enjoy this movie, but you wouldn't even need to see the first movie just to know what is physically supposed to be taking place on screen. The most movie is bright and well-lit, and everything's actually clear, and then the Ursula segment comes on, and it's like, I barely comprehend what is happening on screen, even though I know what's supposed to be going on. So that's something I was very frustrated about. And the other thing I didn't like was the Scuttlebutt song. And I tried to find out if there was originally supposed to be some type of song for Scuttle in that scene. I think there was, but it went back in the animated uh, version, but I'm not sure. I couldn't find information. But I didn't like the song because it took me out of the movie. All the classic songs are there. The new songs are there. The new songs fit very well with the vibe of the uh, movie. Then all of a sudden you have this hip-hop fast track song. Why? Because it's Lin-Manuel Miranda. And when I'm listening to this song, I'm not thinking, okay, here's just a cool new song. I'm thinking, oh, here's Lin-Manuel Lin -Manuel Miranda being Lin-Manuel Miranda. Just can't help himself. Has to have some type of fast-paced hip-hop song. And he makes great music, but it just takes me out of the movie. It's such a jarring, bizarre thing and it's just clearly Lin-Manuel Miranda doing Lin-Manuel thing. It's like if you're watching Quentin Tarantino movie and then a female just puts her bare feet up on the screen. It's like, well, you know, Quentin Tarantino loves bare feet. So it's like, the song itself is, is a cool song, but it just takes me out, it just takes me out of the movie because I'm not thinking a new song, like the Prince Eric song, very nice edition. The song when they're in the market, very nice edition. But that scuttlebutt song just takes me right out of the movie. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the multicultural elephant seals in the room because there's no way to avoid it and there's layers to it like an onion, like Shrek. So let's start with just the general topic of the black Ariel, the happy black Ariel. I'm very interested to hear your thoughts on it because you guys grew up right in the thick of the civil rights movement. Thank you for allowing me to have the future that I have right now. But, you know, as folks that grew up in that era, I would love to know what your initial thoughts of they're going to have a black Princess Ariel. And now that you've seen the products, uh, you know, what are your just thoughts on that? I am um, happy that Disney, you know, is giving black actors and actresses the chance to be the lead character and uh, to be put into... Um, cartoons, animation, um, because like, Disney is mainly for children, so um, that part is nice. I felt, though, that Ariel should have had red hair. You know, um, you think of uh, Disney characters and what's iconic, like Dumbo, the elephant, has big ears. So if you would do a live action, you wouldn't put an Asian elephant because Asia often has small ears. So Ariel, you just think of somebody with red hair, and I think if they had uh, kept that red hair, that would have been better as, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, well, for me, I'm basically a person who don't see people in color. For me to identify Ariel as a black actress, to me is really a, pers a, a, a beautiful person, a wide-eyed beautiful girl playing Ariel, um, I don't. I'm not a um, 
person to say, oh, he's black, he's, he's, she's black, or he's white, or he's white, blah, blah. I just see people as people until they give me a reason to see them some other way. So it was hard for me to see her as ethnic. I saw her more as a person playing the part. Okay, well, so going back to what you're saying about, uh, Professor, about the iconic characteristics, you know, uh, I agree because I was also disappointed that Ariel's hair is not strikingly, uh, intensely red. And yes, it does look more, quote unquote, natural on screen for her to have that uh, that diluted shade of red, that darker shade of red. But again, it goes to that economy. So you think about Nick Fury. I'm so accustomed to a black Nick Fury that when I look at the old comic books or I look at the old cartoons, like, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> Nick Fury he was, was, it. He was yeah, white. white. He was white. Yeah, he but, was white. But one of the iconic things of Nick Fury is the eye patch. Yep. So unless you're doing some type of origin, you're going to have Nick Fury with an eye patch. He's going to be a, a war veteran. Mm -hmm. He's probably going to at least be over 50. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, in for one. Totally in charge. Yeah, exactly. So that's part of that economy. And character Scuttle. Now, in the animated movie, this character was male, and this one is female. And it's said by uh, Aquafina, who I guess is just on everyone's casting the speed dial. <laughs> but the main characteristics of that character is that it's, it's ditzy, uh, thinks it's a know-it-all, but doesn't know anything, a bit, a bit scatterbrained, and is that particular type of bird. So as long as you have that, it doesn't really matter if the character is voiced by a woman or this a man, was, or if it's a girl or female. Excuse me, Scott was a female? Yes. She didn't sound female. It's in the Shang-Chi movie. Okay. You know, uh, the best friend? Yeah. The female best that female best friend of his, that, uh -huh. that's her. Oh, because it didn't, I didn't get a female sounding voice. I, I, I love the way, the, way the, the way the character did the part, but I didn't, I, I didn't see it as a female voice. You, you, <laughs> the things you missed. I you, told you, 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 I, you, I told you I'm glad I saw it two times. <laughs> I don't pick up on things the third time around that I didn't pick up on the first and, time and, around. And just so you know, folks, we, we were chatting on the ride back for the first time, and we were, and my father and I were talking about how it's a musical. Star Leonard did not think the movie was a musical. <laughs> she, she did it because she heard no, music. And we were just like, mean. what do you mean it's not a musical? <laughs> you know, that's it. <laughs> it didn't come across to me as a musical. Yeah, and, and you somehow missed Thanos snapping his fingers in Avengers Infinity War, even though we saw the movie twice. Even though his hand literally takes up a third of the screen, for some reason she never noticed the physical thing. The physical <laughs> snap. And we saw it in IMAX one time. So I don't know if I missed it. But uh, yeah, with the iconography of the red hair, that's something I, I felt. One of the things I have about this, with there being a black aerial, is well, when I was very young, I remember uh, seeing a commercial for the Peter Pan on Broadway, and I think it was Sandy Duncan yeah. being Peter Pan. And being a young kid, I'm thinking, like, why is a woman, a grown woman, playing the boy who never grew up? And you guys told me that when it comes to Broadway, because they're acting, sometimes they, they'll hire a man, so they'll hire a female. They'll, they'll, they want someone that looks the part and, and, and perform the part. And we just, uh, you know, pretend otherwise. So that introduced me to the concept of you can have the character, but be played by anybody else. Yeah. But in this movie, she's not black because they found the best actress and they happen to be black. They made it black because they wanted to set in the Caribbean and they wanted to have a more culturally distinct from that region. And then you see Triton's daughters in his little multicultural rainbow coalition of, of offspring. And so, you know, it's not that she's black because they just happen to hire a black actress. They black because they wanted to set it in this setting and be quote unquote more natural, more believable, more realistic with the, all the other CGI stuff. Mm -hmm. Just like with Sebastian. So when Sebastian walks, he walks side to side instead of straight forward, straight back because that's what crabs do. Because that's more realistic. Yep. So now you have this mermaid that's black, but her father is Spanish, as in Javier Baden. He's from Spain. And he had one wife, but all his daughters are these various races. And you're like, okay, you're doing. So that means he's had more than one wife. No, he's had one. Each, and, and, and each one's a different, came out different? Yeah. Hmm. So, like, are they just randomly generated races, or are they like the Transformers where they're just in proto-form, and then once they come of age, they go to their district and take the form of their district? Maybe, maybe that's probably wrong. <laughs> and, and, then you, and then in this movie, they have Ursula be 
Triton's half uh, of Triton's sister. Sister. So are they biological the same sisters, or are they half sister, half sister and brother? And again, is is she was she a mer woman? And because she practiced black magic, became the octopus type. That, you know, it's just, it's just it just dumps all this extra load on what should be. Yeah, we either we set it in a certain, in a certain way, and we're gonna have it with this um, certain race. Her, I think she called her niece. Horse. Huh? I think yeah. She, she called uh, her her niece. Yeah. And then the, the two of them were sister and brother. Yeah. Right. I'm not saying so. Triton and Ursula are sister and brother. Right. You know, are they full sister and brother, like same parenting, or are they step brothers? No, it's just sister and brother. Right, right. But so it's the same principle. They start out one way and they come something. <laughs> yeah, so that 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 just that just one of the things that sort of takes me off. It's like they're trying to have their cake and eat it too. So oh well. Well with the daughter I just felt that it was like an ensemble cast. I mean it brought me back to when you all were children and you were in the ballet company and um, so each person has to have a part and uh, when they had the nutcracker Clara was always white. Our daughter Tessere asked why does Clara have to be white? And then soon they would had a black person playing Clara. Mm -hmm. So you know as far as the daughter the, um, the king I just thought of it as an ensemble cast and everybody, you know, getting a part, mm -hmm. you know, and I um, was sort of happy that they had the different mm -hmm. races, you yeah. know, and I didn't, didn't go into that deep like you were going <laughs> into. I was just happy that everybody has a part, mm -hmm. if they're going to be part of the company, you know, like Disney and Disney World, they try to, you know, let everybody take part in their productions, mm -hmm. so that's the way I look at it. But uh, but I noticed with uh, um, with Disney's this this Ariel um, Little Mermaid I think kind of almost if not overdid it with the adding and including some uh, different races because if you look at the the scene when they're on the beach I almost ran out of counting how many different ethnic groups were on that beach. Now, now I like the scene where the king and has his daughters. I said, "Whoa, no! Was he a busy man?" Because at the second <laughs> scene, I said, "I bet you by looking at each daughter, you could tell which sea she came from." But, but I did figure, find out later that they were different ages because the first time I had seen the movie, I didn't hear pick up on when they were talking at the shipwreck. That's how I was when I when I was her age. I said, "Oh, okay." But uh, to me, there was it uh, seemed like every main uh, the three major races were re represented in almost to me overkill. But at the same time, they changed the daughters' names in the animated film. All the daughters' names begin with A. Mm -hmm. But in this movie, all the daughters' names tie to their region, mm -hmm. to the ocean. Yeah, area. The, the ocean or whatever, whatever their district is. I don't know. They, they, uh, but yeah, they, they, their names are distinctive for their multicultures as opposed to this one's a Rissa, she happens to be Asian, this one's a Tina, she happens to be Mexican, this one's Alana, this one, and it happens to be, you know, they purposely change the names to reflect the multiculturalism, they were the multiculturalism in one way, but the other way they're still, you know, uh, protecting their iconography of, of in other ways, just frustrating. Me. Especially when it comes to, like, Prince Eric. Now, he's adopted. Yes. Yes, Disney loves their orphans. Yeah. So they got a one and a half orphan. They got Eric. They show him that he was found as a baby from a shipwreck. Shit, so right. his biological parents are presumably dead, mm -hmm. and they were adopted by the king and queen. And I and the king is is dead. He's dead. <laughs> and I guess we could to assume that the king is probably black. I don't know, but his adopted mother's black. So it's like okay. So most of the people in the island. Are black or of that you know the Caribbean kind? We have this realistic setting and these realistic ethnic people, and yet we got this white Prince Eric. <laughs> we won't do a redhead black woman, but we will somehow figure out a way to still have a white Prince Eric. And I'm like, 
Well, and he does a fantastic job. He, yes, he, he, does. he does a phenomenal I job. I still look like he looks like somebody else, another actor I know, but I'll never get it. Yeah. But it's still, it's like they had set this movie in Asia, then Eric would have been Asian, and of course, Eric would have been white. If they set it in Mexico, then Eric would have been Mexican, and Eric was, and Eric was somehow to be white. And they set it to uh, Mongolia or, or China or, you know, right. whatever. <laughs> it's like Eric, it, Eric right. was somehow to be white. It's like they're trying to. Have their cake and eat it too. Mm. And I still feel old from Princess and the Frog. I probably need to do a whole separate video about, but yeah, Princess and the Frog. As much as I print, love Prince Levine, I was like, oh, Black Princess, Black Princess, okay, we're probably going to print Black Prince too. I'm like, nope, I want a Black Prince and Princess. Okay? I want that. It's like they skipped a step. We have a lot of interracial couples now, and that's wonderful. We even have some gay and lesbian interracial couples, and that is wonderful. But I have yet to have a black king and black queen, or a black prince and black princess on screen, and no, the Lion King does not count. What <laughs> human black vision. So, oh well. Let's move on. Please. Let's move on. Oh, here's something that uh, my brother Neo Mass, he, uh, lives in another state and he's the type of person that likes to find out information about the movie before he sees it. He's not much of a movie goer. You can hand him the script to a movie and it won't affect his enjoyment and probably actually like it more. But here's something he brought up before he saw the movie. Uh, apparently there are some folks in the alternate lifestyle community that were upset that Ursula wasn't played by a drag queen. Say and, what? Yes. And now, at first, I had a similar reaction. So at first, I was like, oh, why would that be? But then I remembered that Ursula's original design was inspired by a very famous drag queen named Divine. Oh. Yeah. You watch it. But, uh, Divine. And I brought up a picture. Like, oh, yeah, that's right. I'm glad that Melissa McCarthy got the role. And she does a great job. Yeah. And if they did have a drag queen, it would have just distracted even more. Because now you got the black area and you got a drag queen and everyone's going to be crying about woke and stuff. But I would say there is a tentacle to stand on on this with of the argument of it should have been a drag queen. Because if the character is inspired by a famous drag queen and RuPaul's Drag Race is one of the most popular shows that's going on right now. And I see all these folks are going to easily play the role. So yeah, I would say... There is an argument made to me that even more than my, I want a black Prince Eric. Why? It never um, crossed my mind. This is the first time hearing it. So. Yeah, that, that, that's the one of your interactions with me. But she looked like a drag queen, though, in, in, in the uh, movie. Well, she looks like the part in the, in the, in the character no, design of a drag queen. No. Now, now, now I'm, my eyes are making a connection. Because when I saw Ursula in in in, uh, in the movie, right? Mm -hmm. I, first thing I was concerned that she was going to look like the cartoon version. Why did she succeed? Concerned good or concerned bad? Huh? Concerned good or concerned? Well, you know bad? when you get get live action, how you change this, that, and the other, and you, and you deviate. Okay. No, I was I was worried about the the the, the um they going to deviate as to how she looked. Yeah. And how they're going to present her, mm. but fortunately they got a got a star on that one. Mm. But yeah, yeah, I can see how she would look like. Uh, she does. Well, here. look like one. It, well, hold on here. Movie, yeah. I, I now brought up a picture of Divine on my phone. I'm passing it to Starlings to see what Divine looked like. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, disappeared. <laughs> she looks familiar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can see where they got her, got the idea from mm -hmm. her. They got the idea from her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. That was very good copying. Did did good a job of making her so look like from her, you know from her. Well, let's move on. Now that we've seen the more movie uh, more than one more than once, uh, Professor Pons, do you have any lingering questions or confusions from the film? Yes. Well, My confusion. I, I, I no. said professor. Huh? I said I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh. Sorry. <laughs> so, I, gotta, I don't have my hearing aids on. Sorry, sorry. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Professor. Yes. 
No, you're still not professor. Yes. Professor Policy, aka Dad. Do you have any lingering questions, concerns, or confusions from experiencing the movie? No, I enjoyed it each time. I saw it three times, and I can see it again, and I'll still enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Well, you did have an interesting topical question, because you wondered why the movie was rated PG, even though there doesn't really seem to be anything that would garner a PG that could, could potentially get a G rating. Oh, yeah. I did wonder why the PG and not playing G, you know. Yeah, I, 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 I was going through it. I can't figure out you know, why it's PG. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I can only guess because it's either because it's live action and therefore it hits a little differently just like uh, if you're watching superhero cartoons you see them grabbing people's cars and slamming them or getting punched through walls getting punched through buildings or slamming someone down and becoming a big old earthquake and it doesn't mean nothing but then you watch the man of steel and you see skyscrapers falling down and people running for their lives you're like okay we just had 9-11 we, we know there's hundreds of people injured potentially thousand people of lives laws are changed forever and it is differently. So if you have like Ariel in the cartoon, she gets her legs and she's naked, you know, that's pop hits different than if you have a live action and oh there's an actual quote unquote naked girl on the screen. <laughs> you know? Or you know, I think it's that it's a whole it's like because it really isn't really, I didn't catch any bad language. I didn't catch any significant blood. I didn't catch any disturbing images. And because the climax is so dark, you can barely see Ursula getting impaled. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, like, the first like, time I missed that, yeah. I, I did not see that. Yeah. I, I said, no. That's I, one thing is okay that you did miss because it was so visually dark. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but the second time, it was very clear, though. That was for something dark. It was clear. I, I really, I clearly saw it in the darkness, um, which I'm glad I did, because that was, to me, a highlight of the cartoon version, her getting impaled like that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I said, in the real version, I didn't see it. I, didn't see, I, just, I just see the thing coming. I see the thing coming, and, and she's gone. Matter of fact, I didn't even see her go down. But the second time I, I saw it, I saw it. Wait, well... Star Lantern, yes. Mom, do you have any lingering questions or concerns or confusion from the movie? <laughs> yes. I'd like to know how they had dry sand in the ocean. How do you, what do you mean? Whenever she had to deal with the sand, when she laying on and you know, the sand, it's, it, it's dry, but she's in water. Shouldn't that sand have floated? No. Well, uh -huh. well, well, I mean, maybe a few particles. Okay, and basically everything stayed put. You know, nothing, nothing kind of floated around because she had things on the shelf. She had uh, uh, this thing, thing uh, on th being on the water. Wouldn't things float? No, not necessarily. Because sand is on the f floor, so it has enough weight to be on the floor. Yeah, but and, the, and the, the, the the top, the ocean is way down here. It's, it sands way down here, and, you know. I, I guess, I guess so. But uh, anyway, uh, and and how all the the things in there, the clocks, the book, even the books, the books are dry. I couldn't understand that. I don't recall that. Anyway, that was that was what um question, and uh, I might be the diversity here, but it's another point I want to bring up. Mm -hmm. That um, in the original version, cartoon version. Ariel is fascinated at seeing her feet. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it was really played up mm -hmm. in the human version. We just see her toes, mm -hmm. and she has very pretty toes. She has some very pretty fingernails. Mm -hmm. Okay, but her feet were not given the uh, attention and expression on her face mm -hmm. of having. And the same thing so again at the end when Daddy made her human again. She, it should have been like in the original. Where she looked, felt felt the change, mm. and looked up at her father, and was very happy. So basically, you, we would want a few more seconds of acknowledging that her body is different. Yeah. yeah, a few more. Maybe there wasn't; it might have been cut, you know, or trimmed or something like that. Yeah, that, that happens often. But I, I see what you're saying. 
Well, I have a cup. Uh, first, the daughters meet for the coral moon, and I don't know what the significance of that is. Maybe it's something tied to the Caribbean. Maybe some type of I don't understand. It's what. a special. It's a special time of year, just like Cinco de um, Mayo is a special occasion for me uh, you know people of Mexican uh, Mexican right? yeah. descent. The, the Coromo is, I guess, the, uh, it's in a certain position in the. And the everything, everybody gathers together, and the sirens can sing their songs. And any any sailor or out at sea will be lured lured to their doom. Yeah. It's a special time where they sort of like a, like a convention. This is this is our time to really sock it to the male race. <laughs> okay, I was not aware of that. The movie doesn't really and that's the advantage. highlight it that well. <laughs> and, and that's the advantage of seeing the movie the second time. Because I definitely didn't pick up on that the first time. But I didn't think it was significant. I guess we did. This was something that, that a holiday or something that they get together. I didn't think it was necessary for me to know why. I was thinking even Ursula maybe she had to, had to mm -hmm. cast her a particular spell by the by the coral moon or right. else it wouldn't work or something. But no, I was like, we're meeting at the coral moon. Like, okay, is that every three months? Is that every six months? Every five years? Like, what, what, is, what does that mean? Well, I, I, I think, it is, I think it's, it's based on when it happens. Because whatever it is, it's, it was a serious enough situation that the sailors were telling Eric that it's, it's that time of year that we have to get back yeah. before uh, they get together and, and do it. Right. So whatever it is, is uh, the sailors know not to be out in the ocean. Oh, yeah. I still don't that matter to me. Yeah. Something that went even into my mind. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Another yeah. thing was Eric's sailing crew. On the animated movie, we do only see the the crew briefly at the beginning, mm -hmm. which is fine. Uh, but in this movie, he is presented to have a direct kinship yeah. with these folks. He's you know singing with them. He's yep. uh, yeah. interacting with them. It's really more he, natural. Listen, and, I like and, this version. And he says that he wants to be a person of the people. He wants to explore. He sees them as their friends more than the crew. And, uh, and then we don't see him anymore, including the little cabin boy. They even have a little... Cabin boy, that he needs to be saving. And then we don't see those guys again. Even when I was watching the, end, the ending, I was looking at the beach. Okay, where's the cabin boy? I don't see the cabin boy. You know boy what? Anymore. I haven't seen that cabin boy yet. <laughs> <laughs> do you I didn't see it the first time. Do, do you, the second time. Do you remember one of the crew literally physically tossing a, a, a person off the a, ship? Yeah. Okay. And the person being tossed, that's the cabin boy. Well, I mean, I saw him that way, but I didn't see him. I didn't see the face. Didn't see the face. Well, I expected him to come back in the story, and they never did. And it doesn't ruin the movie for anybody like that. It just seemed like that was going to be part of, uh, you know, more, more to the story, or, or at least seen at the end. Like, hey, Eric, or, or or maybe they're getting on the boat. Like, hey, Eric, we're, we're, we're all good and waiting for you to come on the boat or something, though. But they, you pretty much didn't see any of the crew except for the, um, his... Um uh, what's the man that that works that that's his uh I didn't write down the name, but I know what you're talking about. The the, the head of the, right. the, the head the head waiter. The, the, head, the, the, the head butler. No, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll just call him that. Uh, and the door. He, he has some of the title, but yeah. So I'm yeah. just like, what happened to the crew? Right. <laughs> I thought there would be more. I guess, they, I guess they went back into town or where they you know where yeah. because yeah, except for Finding him on the beach. No, that wasn't him yeah. finding him on the yeah, beach. That was, was guards. That was the, yeah, the guards. The guards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, castle folk. I mean, you know. So, yeah. So, um, but that was. I like that scene with him on, on the crew, and that's where I got that very good appreciation of of what they went through when they had those boats way back when in, in the ocean. That, I don't know where they got those. How they got that ocean. But I have new respect for. And the last thing on on this particular type of, of questions. So Ursula has been plotting for fifteen years to get her revenge, yeah. and she gets the crown, and she gets this Trident, Trident and then Trident is just disintegrated. You waited fifteen years for that. <laughs> I want to see him suffer. I want to see him ride on the hook. I can't wait to get my revenge, and then he's disintegrated. Fifteen years for that. Congratulations, I guess. <laughs> On the one hand, you, there's plenty of times in, in fiction where, like, the villain should just kill the hero instead of gloating, instead of 
you know, torturing instead of you know, trying to break the person, just kill the person. But this is one time, you, it was like, well, that's it. You are just, <laughs> you do just want to just kill it. <laughs> 15 years of plotting and planning and being in isolation and there's, he's gone. And, and she didn't even kill him. It was the, uh, it was the, uh, the eels that killed, <laughs> killed him. <laughs> I hope that was worth the 15 years of plotting and play. <laughs> they, they did those eels nice. That, that, yeah. They look like the, the mm -hmm. cartoon one version, yeah. too. I am disappointed that they didn't have any lines, but it doesn't really work. Who, the eels? Yeah. They didn't have any lines in the original one. No, they did. Huh? They did. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Yeah, it was like they were talking or something. Yeah. Well, but, they, but, no, but they, the, these eels were very good. Mm -hmm. All right, so next topic. Were there any changes... Uh, of this update, this remake, that you found were significant improvements or significant deterrence. Dad, well, what's up with Dad? One review I had looked at said that um, they had Ariel doing the ship, steering the ship, as in cartoon as Eric, Eric mm -hmm. steering the ship. Yeah, I so, picked up on that this, yeah, this time, uh, second time. I didn't right pick here. up on that until I heard somebody else say yeah. that. So. Well, that's actually something that Neo Mass also brought up uh, because some folks were saying that uh, they wanted to, to change it so that Ariel was the one that defeated Ursula. And I still like the original ending with Eric and the ship. Yeah, me too. But, too. Me as, too. Yeah. but as far as storytelling, I would agree that Ariel should have a direct hand in defeating the villain mm -hmm. since she is the protagonist. The movie's named after her. She's the one that gave her voice to the sea witch. She's mm -hmm. the one that has the more antagonistic relationship with her father. So she should definitely have the more direct hand in defeating the villain as far as standard storytelling goes. Right. And now we shall move on to the Star Lantern, a.k.a. Mom. <laughs> um. Change, you said changes? Yeah, it's changes, updates, uh, you know. Well, here, I'll give you an example. So, in this movie, Sebastian is not the grand conductor. He's no. just one of the top servants. Mm -hmm. In the animated movie, he's a conductor. So, even though this movie's a musical, and in musicals, people can just start singing randomly whenever they want, by having him be a conductor, it makes it a little bit more plausible that he can suddenly burst into song and direct people into song and... So Kiss the Girl, it makes sense how the musical conductor can suddenly come up with a song and, and uh, conduct that. Or Kiss the Girl, it makes sense how a professional, well, uh, well see renowned <laughs> musical conductor can come up with a song. Whereas here, it's, the songs are so nice, it's, the story still plays out the same, but I just find that little bit of change, just, you know, like a, a little bit of a disinterment. Doesn't hurt, doesn't hurt. But it just makes that a little less pause. Just like how they have Sebastian walking side to side to make it more real. Yeah, I like that. It makes it a little more, quote unquote, real that a musical conductor can suddenly make songs out of nowhere as opposed to just a royal guard, royal person, royal servant, whatever. He's the, king, he's the king's yes man, servant, go to person. But anyway, this version to me was more natural. It's, it's like we were having a conversation and all of a sudden, Hi, how you doing? And you just start saying, set the mood. You get an idea of how to, to set the mood or to do something. And you then you start gradually acting. That's the way I took it. Mm -hmm. yeah, not, it's, not, it's, not, not, and, and so that to me, so that was a change that was more natural to me. Because mm -hmm. the way you did with the, um, the, the um, reeds hitting each other mm -hmm. and they use actual, um, uh, what's that, um, uh, Insects for a certain sound. I like the way that was done. Yeah, it's, it's done well. I'm just saying it makes it a little bit more plausible that a professional music conductor no. can come up with it. To me, no. It, 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 that was a, to me. It was that wasn't necessary. It was necessary for for the the cartoon version because they were going to put on a performance. The, the daughters were going to. They were pregnant. Yeah, but, 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 but also, this version. But in this version. They were just getting together so they could blow whatever they got to do to to, to a trance because you know, of the moon or whatever whatever the situation. Mm -hmm. It was a totally different situation. In the cartoon version, it was getting ready for a performance. Mm -hmm. In this version, they were getting ready for the, mm -hmm. the, the, well, well, the think, boom. Well, well, this topic is going on longer than I expected, but think about uh, Under the Sea. 
the loop plays the hoop, the boss plays about the bass play the bass, it didn't turn up. The pop the the pop the about the duke the something is the Duke of Soul. Yeah, the, he knows all this stuff. But Wouldn't it make more sense for a musical conductor to see the ocean in this musical no. way than just some random crab that <laughs> No, that's, because that's he that. had said earlier that he was an educated yeah. He was educated, so that means he wouldn't know stuff like that. Well, See, he was educated, blah, 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 well, and hear an answer. Well, such, 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 such. well, Neil deGrasse Tyson is educated. I doubt he can lead the London Symphony Orchestra. <laughs> but, 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 you may be aware, excuse me. Excuse me, but this is, can I, can I, can I talk now? Yes. Yes. Go Thank on, you. I agree with what you're saying, mm -hmm. but what I'm saying is naturally thinking up. He's thinking up um, what uh, what the reeds called Re the, the 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 reeds. Yeah, they were what percussion. Per uh, percussion. Or well, anyway, so he so he's seeing things around him, and then even uh, who uh, uh, was it Flounder or Flounder joining uh, who or the uh, the bird. Uh, making the um, other in, in, uh, yes, something else. okay. So everybody got caught on to what he was doing. Mm -hmm. He was using things around him to to make the music to set the mood, mm -hmm. and uh, that that's what it was. Oh, I, mm -hmm. oh, I could do you know do this, and and, and it started insects mm -hmm. flying. And ch -ch -ch -ch. That's what it was. A natural setting and bursting out in in um, creative. An expression through different things around him. Mm -hmm. the insects, the, uh, the water, like, yeah. the fish shooting the water. Well, I'll, I'll, I think they got that idea from Flounder. It wasn't Flounder the first one to shoot water over the over the um, over the. Yes. Okay. He, I think he gathered them though. Okay, so so everybody was picking up on what he what he, what he started. That's what it was. Well, I'll, I'll, I. We'll move on. Now <laughs> 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 that you have an idea what I mean by the changes, do you have any changes that you see as either improvement or deterrent? Uh. Um, the scene with the uh, all the different sea creatures, I started trying to say, okay, okay, that's a blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I seen that kind of starfish, that's a something, something. Uh, um, the manta rays, the this, I, 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 try, I wanted to try to see how many um, different kinds of fishing things. That, but the one I didn't understand was the one that I wondered if it's a real fish. There were black and white stripes, mm -hmm. and then then there was one that 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 was the skinny star looking one. Okay, then they had a different type of skinny star looking one, mm -hmm. and then I was one the the fish that that went around area at the end like a fan. I said, was that are those real fish? I, so I I really enjoy seeing all the different type of sea creatures. Well, so, I, I will say this, it's. It's very likely that every type of fish or aquatic life you saw was real. Yeah, I think so too. I, I'd imagine that everyone, because like I said they go through all this quote unquote realism and detail, uh, and, uh, and, and you know, in my make up something. There's no point of making up. <laughs> I will say uh, part of the song is uh, there's a there's a like, second verse. He's talking about the fish on the land ain't happy, <laughs> but he's swimming in dolphins, and like that's in the animated movie, so you think in this movie, that section, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be swimming with dolphins because they're not fish. Well, <laughs> the that, first about that, fish that's what I said to myself. Fish. I, that's what I said. I said, no, they're not fish. I said, I said, I said but, uh, who, who am I? You know, I said, just, <laughs> I said, dolphins are not fish. <laughs> and, and then they used the dolphin to, uh, when they were trying to harpoon, actually uh, harpoon um, the uh, mermaid on the ship. And, and, and Eric told him to look, look again, and it was a dolphin. But really, they really were, they really were trying to uh, spear uh, a mermaid. Mm -hmm. But somehow or another, the dolphin got there in time to, um, with so when Eric told him to look, they actually saw a dolphin, not a mermaid. Well, I'm pretty <laughs> sure it was a dolphin the whole time. No, I think it was a mermaid. Because we don't see mermaids until it's time for the darkness to gather. And even then, we only we barely see anything of the citizens. That's another change I did like because in the in the, in the oh. animated film, because they're presenting, it's uh, basically Ariel's debutante performance. You know, all mm -hmm. the citizens come to the castle. Where here you sit next to none of the uh, other Sarah guards until the very end. You see like two guards. You see one or two mer people when the guards are first yeah. swimming to, yeah, the, yeah. to the meeting place, but. 
pretty much you don't see but, yeah but, but i climb myself I'm like wait a minute where did all these people come from oh yeah that's right there's the whole underwater kingdom <laughs> that, we, that, we, that we saw nothing <laughs> Okay, this just just popped in my head. You said a change that you noticed that you like. I like the scene where where they were uh, gathering the stuff that from the shipwreck, mm -hmm. and and um, um, tried it, and his, and his daughters thought it was they were polluting the ocean, which was like a message to humans. They they saw it as pollution. We knew it was a shipwreck. Yeah, and everyone said that I doubt they they plan on. Yeah, they, they right, right. But I like that scene, and I like how he, he picked up um, the, the bars thing and threw it into a pile. Yeah. Well, actually, I like that. I like that. That's that an improvement. That brings me to my what was not. It's not supposed to lingering question, but it's not a plot hole. But I feel like there's a secondary story that's not that's not addressed. Triton is furious with humans because a human killed uh, his wife. Okay, fine. And the daughters have sort of embraced that prejudice about humans. And Eric's mother is Same thinking thing. that the god, the sea gods are against them. Mm -hmm, saying that they're trying to recede the, the lands. The sailors think that the sea mermaids are all trying that. to... So there's like some war that's about to that break out in the moon. But also, you, when Ursula presents herself to Ariel, Ariel says that uh, she's been told that Ursa likes to cause trouble between humans and merfolk. Mm -hmm. So it makes you wonder, is it really Ursula that's been messing around, messing around with both sides? And, and then even after the uh, sort of peace between them, it's still the question of what are the humans going to eat because they're clearly seafaring <laughs> and, and uh, eating fish and, you know, and crab and all that kind of stuff. So what is, do they have, like, new rules about what they can't, can't eat? But, yeah, I was just thinking about that man. Like, wait a minute, there's another story going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> these, these, these two are pretty much one bad situation away from war. But if Ursula's been messing around, maybe it's her that's really been doing all this. So, yeah, I think there's a st untapped potential in that. Before you get there, also about eating, remember the, the coconut. So I said to myself, well, what are they going to eat? Mm -hmm. Because he um, said, when they see the coconut, they start banging on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then when they were sure, the man offered her some coconut, and she refused to take it. Yeah. So you know, I'm saying, well, what are they going to eat? You mm -hmm. know, so. And the, and the song they bought song was taken out, which both myself and Neil Mass were disappointed by. I, I figured it would be taken out, but that's our song. Uh, Le Pas song is a song. It's sung in the Prince Eric's kitchen. Uh, the chef, he's planning a meal. He planning to use the seafood. Oh, yeah, they and, did leave that out. And uh, Sebastian is in, winds up in the kitchen. And yeah. He's literally running for his life as a chef. Oh, to, yes. oh yeah. Yeah, meal, so. that's right. So, yeah, this so was like... And, and even when Ariel's being bathed in this new movie, they show they show that there's fish on the hook as far uh -huh. as a decal. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah, I really love to know the the the, see, the, the food eating negotiations between me and Trident. Yeah, that was, Queen, a, that was a good scene in the, in the cartoon version. Mm -hmm. in that kitchen scene with yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to wrap up with saying this as far as the improvements and things like that. And I didn't even realize this uh, until I was watching the climax, and I mentioned this as we were driving home the first time, that when Ursula was getting mad, I said to myself, I need giant octopus woman. <laughs> Huge, cracking size octopus woman. Don't have her transform into some other form. Don't have her transfer transform some sea creatures into me her mess of the No, I need giant octopus woman, or else I'm done with these Disney remakes. For those that know who haven't seen the other Disney live action remakes, they have been messing with the villains. Gaston, he had his song in uh, the Beauty and Beast film. That was pretty much fine, although the line of um, cover with hair, he doesn't take off his in his chest, but still, like, at least it was fine. But Maleficent, oh, this is the origin of the most evil, diabolical Disney villains of all time. No, she's an anti-hero, and she doesn't turn into a dragon. She has her 
makes her servant creature turn into a dragon. I'm waiting for this woman to turn into a dragon. It doesn't happen. And no, the sequel of her turning into a phoenix doesn't count because he only did that because he didn't do it to a dragon the first time around. And then you have Aladdin. Jafar, I want to see how snake-like he can be. He doesn't turn into a snake. He makes Iago turn into a giant bird, and I don't get the giant snake. And then Cruella. I enjoy the Cruella movie, but what's one of the th main things of Cruella? Liz for furs. So it doesn't make any sense that, you, that, that you're going to rebrand her, and she's an animal lover and a dog lover. The worst offender of all. Scar, the Lion King remake. All the other songs are spoken. Beyonce gets her, her brand new song, and yet Be Prepared, arguably the best Disney villain song of all time. They speak one verse, speak it. I'm not the type of person to walk out of the movie, but I would have walked right out of the movie if, if after that uh, travesty that was so-called Be Prepared. So as I'm watching this climax, I was like, she better turn into giant octopus woman. I got giant octopus woman. Yeah. It would have been nicer if I could clearly see her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Much better. But at least I got giant octopus woman. Okay. So with that, let's go on to our final verse and thoughts. We shall start with Star Lantern. <laughs> what are your final thoughts and great for the movie? Okay, my final thoughts. For, they did a, a very, very good job of remake in general. There are little changes, but to me, the changes make the movie more humanly natural and possible. I like the part where Eric was talking to Ariel, showing her the, the maps, um, where they are, and it, it sounds like these are real places. So that made it more natural in general. And that's what I liked about the movie, that even though her hair wasn't right, they didn't, she, they didn't do the scene with the, her being excited about her feet and all that, the movie was looked more natural, and for that reason, I give it an A. Well, Professor Policy, what is your final thoughts and grade? Well, I enjoyed the movie. I saw it in regular, then I saw it in 3G, and I liked the 3G better. Um, I think it brought out the ocean part better. And I gave the movie an A. And I enjoyed the movie. Overall, many of the changes, while I might sound <laughs> like I was, uh, I had probably a lot of them were fine. Uh, the main concerns I have were done well, like with Kiss the Girl, and the performances are great. And yes, even though I still don't have a black prince and princess yet, I still enjoy the characters. And all the other little things I pointed out, they don't ruin it for me. I was debating whether to give it an A minus or a B plus, and I'm going to go with a B plus simply because, even though I got Giant Octopus Woman, that sequence is just so dark. And if I had not seen the first movie, I probably would barely understand what's going on. So, because the climax wasn't visually strong, that's what's going to bring it down to a B plus. As they say, you got to stick the landing, and you lose a little bit of stuff. Going. So, just to re remind, Star Landing, your grade is. A. Professor Policy, your grade is A. And I, High Heel Knight, host of this wonderful program, give the movie a B plus. Very good. Okay, so that was our review slash rant of the movie. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> we sure did rant. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, I didn't know yeah, that. Was, that, was, that was more... Uh, that was true rant. Exciting than I expected, so that, <laughs> that's pretty good. Woo. So, be sure to like, share, subscribe, or dislike, share, and subscribe. Once again, I'm High Heel Knight. I'm Star Lantern. And I'm Professor Policy. Reminding you to find inspiration everywhere. everywhere.